again we've laid out our coefficients from you know our quotient that we got so we reduced it down to one level and we took the coefficients and laid them out here and we're gonna to have to try possible factors of negative 20 again possible factors of a negative 20 are gonna be plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 4 plus or minus 5 plus or minus 10 and uh, plus or minus 20 right I know what the possible factors of this are and I'm just gonna pick one of those right now, if you didn't know, and if you, you won't know if you're given a question like this, the best chance that you have of finding a possible factor is starting off with the lowest possible factors first. And the more of these you do, again, the more of these you do, you'll get a pretty good idea of what the possible factor is going to be. Because if you look at this right now, you got a two and an eight, which are positive, and you got negative five and negative 20. Now, right away just looking at this you should have an idea what might work right because right now the positives add up to 10 and the negatives add up to 20 negative 25 right so you know one is not going to work because if everything's just being multiplied by one what's going to happen is the positives don't balance out the negatives negative one is not you know it probably is not going to work okay so you're gonna you know you could skip positive one and negative one and just go to positive two and negative two okay so what we're gonna do for this is you know pick, pick a factor that already pick a number that already knows a factor and we're gonna try out x is equal to negative four which means x plus four is a possible factor of this okay. so we're gonna try out x is equal to negative four and if we bring negative four over it just means the factor is x plus four right so what happens is the two is gonna come down multiply by negative four it's gonna come up here and so forth so 2 times negative 4 is going to be negative 8. Add them together, you get 0. 0 times negative 4 is just going to be 0. Add them together, you get negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 4 is going to be positive 20. Add them up, you get 0. Negative 20 plus 20 is going to be 0, right? So that means x plus 4 is a factor of this polynomial, right? And what we have down here is the quotient and one thing to keep in mind is you know we have a zero term here what that means is this was x to the power of three so we just took out an x from a polynomial from a function that was x to the power of three that means what's left over the quotient is going to be x to the power of two so this is going to be 2x squared plus 0x and we don't really need that right as soon as you get a zero in your synthetic division in the quotients you know you can skip those terms but make sure you keep track of what you're skipping if that was x squared that's x squared right x to the power of one goes here and that just becomes a constant do not put your x over here because this guy's zero everything goes down sequentially right ding 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 all the powers have to go down in order so if you have a zero that uses up uh, you know one of the x's okay so let's write down the quotient here What we have now is 2x squared minus 5. Now we're down to a quadratic, right? Something to the power of 2. And, you know, it happens to be two things subtracted from each other. So we can factor this using the difference of squares, or we can factor it using the quadratic formula, or we can just solve for this by setting it equal to 0, moving the 5 over, dividing by 2, and square rooting both sides, which is basically what I'm going to end up doing, right? So what you end up doing for this one, you can factor this one right now, and let's just do it over here. So what we do, we go 2x squared minus 5, you set that equal to 0, bring the 5 over, and then divide both sides by 2. So what you end up having is x squared is equal to 5 divided by 2, and to solve for this, you got to get the x by itself, so you take the square root of both sides, okay? Let's just write that down here, right? Square root of x squared is going to be x. Square root of 5 over 2, and remember, square root of anything is always plus or minus, so that's going to be square root of plus or, mi uh, plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2, okay? So those are our two other factors, because that's two different solutions, right? So our solutions for that is going to be x is equal to plus or minus 5 over 2. So, if, you know, going back to our original question where we had, you know, the h of x to the power of 4, the possible factors or 
the roots, the zeros, where the h of x, where the function crosses the x-intercept, or x is equal to positive square root of 5 over 2, x is equal to negative square root of 5 over 2, x is equal to uh, negative 4, and x is equal to 3. So there's four places where our polynomial crosses the x-axis, okay? And that's, those, those would be the solutions if that function was equal to zero. But we asked for it to be, you know, we asked, the, the question would have been if they gave it to you in the function form to factor that polynomial, right? So we're gonna have to write it down and in its factored form. Now, keep in mind, if we're gonna have to write this in its factored form, this is square root of five over square root of two. So we're gonna grab the square root of two, cross multiply up here and take the square root of five and bring it over, right? So I'm just gonna write these down, both both the the factors of it in you know in its factored form. That way we're just gonna to go to the original function and write down what it looks like in its factored form. Okay. So in its factored form, x is equal to plus or minus square root of five over two. It just looks like this, right? Square root of two x, and the x is not under the square root symbol, right? Square root of two x minus f square root of five, square root of two x plus the square root of five. Again, the x is not under the square root symbol, okay? So let's take all of these and write out the function in, uh, you know, where we, where we start off with, basically. So you know what the original function looks like in its factored form. So h of x, this function here in its factored form is gonna look like the following. That function up there could be written as h of x could be this guy, x minus three times x plus four times square root of two x plus square root of five times square root of two x minus the square root of five. If you foiled out this whole thing down here, you would end up with your original function. And all of those points means that each one of those is gonna be an x-intercept. Each one of those points gives you gives you gives you an x-intercept. Okay. Um, one thing we are going to talk about later on when we start graphing polynomials in a lot more detail. Anyway, is whenever you have you know a polynomial a function to a, to a power here, the highest power decides the maximum possible number of x-intercepts that you can have. Okay. So. This was x to the power of four, and the maximum number of x-intercepts we could have had was four, and we ended up getting four, okay? You don't necessarily need four or get four. Sometimes you get none, right? But the highest power in any polynomial gives you the maximum number of x-intercepts, okay? And right now, we got four x-intercepts. We couldn't have five x-intercepts because this was a power of four, right? So just, you know, just, just a pointer for the next stuff coming up. The highest power in any polynomial decides the maximum number of x-intercepts you can have. You can have less than that, but that's the maximum number you can have, okay? Hopefully this made sense. Uh, there's a fair bit of uh, stuff that we did here, a fair bit of calculations, but it's all fairly straightforward. You're bringing numbers down, multiplying by whatever they're coming up, adding them together. You gotta know how, know how to use your multiplication table, or you're gonna know your multiplication table, you know, and bringing it down. If it's a factor of it, this one wasn't. If that ends up being a zero, that number there is a factor of that guy, that's your quotient. You continue on this one, you use synthetic division on this one until you kick it down to something to a power of two or something that you can factor using the other techniques. And then you use that one, you factor it if it can, and you get all the possible factors of your original question that you started with, your original function you started with, okay? We'll end up doing a couple of more questions at least um, and uh, see where it goes from there. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this makes sense and you know, it looks fairly easy for you, even though it's taken a fair bit of work to get it done, okay?